Welcome to the port of Rotterdam, one of the busiest, baddest ports on the planet. Getting the biggest ships in the world into dock without a catastrophe is a never-ending challenge. Today, Rotterdam has a full roster. Three mega movers with cargo that push the limits. The mega tall, the mega deep, and the mega wide. And they're all heading in at the same time. When the world's industrial giants move their mountains, there's a legendary port with the sheer mechanical brawn and depth of water to handle these colossal shipments. 95% of world cargo volume moves by ship. And this port sees the biggest of them. Located on the Netherlands coastline, the port of Rotterdam's winding main channel stretches over 40 kilometers. This vast operation pushes through 350 million tons of cargo every year. For its really big vessels, there's only one way in, the channel's front door. And there's only one part of the port deep enough to handle these monster hulls. So for all its mega ships, Rotterdam faces the same challenge. Squeeze their bulk into the channel's front door without hitting bottom. Slam on the brakes before they crash the dock. And get their load off with lightning speed. Within the next 48 hours, almost 170 vessels will come calling, including three mega ships with monster cargo. First up, the mega deep, the Burger Star. This bulk carrier's load of iron ore is so deep that Rotterdam is one of the only two ports in the world that can harbor her enormous belly. Can the port get her in without scraping bottom? Up next, the Mega Wide, the Savannah Express. 8,400 containers stretch across her deck, making the Savannah one of the top two container ships in the world. Can the port's tugs make her big turn? Finally, the Mega Tall, the Mighty Servant 3. This ingeniously engineered, massive open-deck cargo ship is giving the port an eye-popping mission. Pull off her 6,000-ton oil rig in open water. Three mega ships, three mega challenges. And Rotterdam is ready. Up in harbour control, the brains of Rotterdam's operation track every ship. Yeah. Over 30,000 per year. Yeah. Aerial photos, GPS and sonar mixed with old school communication to keep these hulking vessels okay. in line. There is no room for error. No one wants to be on watch when a mega ship's arrival goes wrong. These two massive ships crashed outside the port of Singapore when one ship veered off its prescribed course. The combined cargo at stake, 50,000 tons. And a ship carrying six times that weight just arrived. Say hello to the biggest of her kind on the planet, the Burger Star. There are big ships, and there are mega big ships.
Her name means steel mountains, and she is one. The Stahl is the biggest bulk carrier in the world. Dead weight, she tips the scale at an inconceivable 365,000 tons. End to end, she stretches a cool 343 meters. The entire Eiffel Tower could easily fit upon her deck. But her signature trait is her girth, plummeting 23 meters into the sea. Which means over 12,000 SUVs could fit in her hull. But the Stahl's only cargo is iron ore, and no other ship in the world can carry more. Each of these five cargo holds contains about 70,000 tons. In one trip, the Stahl can haul enough ore to make the Golden Gate Bridge three times over. Great care has been taken to distribute the Burgerstahl's monstrous cargo evenly. After 20 years at sea, she's never had an accident. Up in Rotterdam's Port Authority, the airwaves are humming. Because megaship number two is about to arrive, with a haul of mega-tall proportions. Meet the mighty Servant 3 and her 6,000-ton hunk of cargo. Of all the ships that come to Rotterdam, this one might be the most unique. At first glance, this ship seems to be missing her sides, but that's what makes her perfectly designed for her job. Open deck heavy transport ships specialize in hauling what few others can. The weird. The unwieldy. Even a full-size destroyer. Looking like a giant upside-down insect, this is actually the living quarters of an oil rig. The three steel legs tower above the water two times the height of the Statue of Liberty. And she weighs as much as 17 jumbo jets. The Mighty has made safe passage all 20,000 kilometers from the United Arab Emirates. And she's ready to take a load off. But Port Authority doesn't have the luxury to focus on one shipment. Another ship with a mega-wide load is ready to move. Just one look at her 8-meter bow point, you know she means business. Make way for the Savannah Express and her island of container cargo. She's impressive. She should be. The Savannah ranks as one of the two biggest container ships in the world. You're looking at 4,444 containers, each about the size of a trailer home. And that's just what you can see on her deck. There's just about the same below. Remove her cargo, and two space shuttles sitting wing to wing could just about fit on her deck. Knowing how to load cargo, packing everything from toys to trucks to TNT, is a challenge. There are some hard and fast rules. For stability, your heaviest containers go below. Keep the dangerous goods and flammable liquids above deck, because you never want an explosion in your hull. Any more than seven stacks in front of the bridge, and the captain can't see. Too much weight in the center, she sags. Not enough, she hogs. And that's before the ship leaves the dock. Once you factor in rough seas, changes in current, and wind shear, container shipping becomes a risky business with colossal stakes. 
The Savannah has traveled 20,650 kilometers from Shanghai without a mishap. But now she's got to navigate one of the busiest ports in the world, offload her precious cargo, and keep to schedule. And that's only one ship. He can be on the farm. Up in harbor control, the mega tall, the mega wide, and the mega deep are all calling to enter Rotterdam at the same time. For the port authority, it's all hands on deck to get these mega movers safely to dock. But despite these vessels' command of the sea, before the day is done, one of these ships is going to sink. Off Rotterdam's shore, a ship with a mega deep load of ore prepares to enter the port. Rotterdam is just one of two ports in the world that have enough water to harbor this baby. But as deep as Rotterdam is, it all comes down to nature. The port still depends on the highest tide to keep the Burgerstahl's massive hull from hitting bottom. The Stahl has safely traveled nearly 8,000 kilometers from Brazil. Captain's orders, head for port. The Stahl is ready to enter Rotterdam. But is Rotterdam ready for the Stahl? Navigating this beast through the port's front door gives the phrase tight squeeze a whole new meaning. Here's how it works. When the Burgerstahl approaches the port's entrance, the channel's width is not a problem. It's the depth. 24 meters. That means any ship that enters Rotterdam has just 24 meters depth clearance to get her hull through. The Burgerstahl's hull depth? 23 meters. And that last meter of water fills up with sand awfully fast. And there lies the problem. But Rotterdam's Port Authority has the perfect tool in their arsenal. She's called Cornelia, but ladylike, she's not. Cornelia is one of a vast dredging fleet that constantly clears the channel floor to ensure Rotterdam's megaship's safe passage. 50 tons of draghead rig plunge to the bottom. On every trip, this massive vacuum sucks enough silt and sand into her hopper to fill almost 600 dump trucks. When the hopper reaches its max, steel cables hoist her rig. A small trip out to sea, and the Cornelia dumps her load. Then the whole process begins again and never stops. Twenty-four hour shifts, 365 days per year. But no ship needs the space like the Stahl. At the next high tide, this port has to be ready to squeeze the mega deep belly of this beast through its front door. But first, another hulking vessel is coming in with a load that's mega wide. The Savannah's captain has deftly navigated this monster ship all the way from Shanghai. But getting his ship into Rotterdam goes beyond even his expertise. Now it's time to put this 107,000 tons of responsibility onto the shoulders of Rotterdam's elite the pilots. A special force whose only job is to bring these babies into port. They know Rotterdam like no one else. Navigating the tight corners of a docking berth is tough stuff 
especially for the mega ships. Boat-to-boat -boat transfers are tricky at the best of times and downright dangerous at the worst. If the pilot were sucked under the ship, he would have no chance against the Savannah's 100-ton propeller. Approaching the port, a load this wide presents an incredibly tough navigational challenge. Imagine steering from the back, a ship the length of three city blocks, and you can't see six city blocks in front of you. From his helm, wheelhouse, the pilot and captain have to peer over containers stacked as high as a five-story building. Which means their visibility line crosses two ship lengths before they can see the surface of the water. Amazingly, these thin tug lines help keep the course. But if the Savannah overshoots her mark, they may not be able to stop her wayward progress. Pilot to tug communication is critical, since the pilot often can't see the dwarf tugs next to the ship. The Savannah is heading to the mother of Europe's container yards, Delta Terminal, the nexus of nearly 4 million containers per year. But before the mega-wide sidles up next to the Delta's massive cranes, she'll need to make one very important last turn. To make the hairpin right turn into Delta's docking bay, the Savannah needs practically everything her rudder can give her. If she sideslips, she'll crash into the oncoming container bay. The pilot begins her awesome right turn. As the Savannah hits the critical angle, the tugs throw their engines into the fight. But they can only do so much. And then the strain hits the breaking point. Her stern begins to slip closer to the docks. The rear tug scrambles to get their line reattached. As the remaining tugs heave their all to keep her on course. The rear tug finally reconnects his line to this giant. And the Savannah continues her turn. And keeps turning until she actually swings her whole stern around. And then it's a backwards, parallel park job on a mega scale. With one last thrust of her propeller, her giant sides glide to their final stop. Harbour Control's job with the Savannah is almost done. Just one last small step remains. Times 8400. And Delta's squadron of mega machines are ready. It's just the kind of cargo they can get their teeth into. But they've got just half a day to pull off the job. Back in harbour control, eyes are drawn to another mega ship. This one with a mega tall load. The mighty Servant 3 has made it through Rotterdam's front door without a problem. She's heading for the deepest water in the port to offload her cargo. And the captain radios an urgent message. The 
Almighty is about to sink. Exactly as she is supposed to. This ship has the incredible ability to take on water and sink its deck, two stories down into the sea, which is the best way to unload her monster rig. The Mighty moves into the deepest spot in the port and readies her anchor. And it's quite the anchor. Rotterdam is one of the few ports in the world with a waterhole deep enough to pull off this amazing aquatic feat. The theory is quite simple. Sink the ship deep enough to pull off the rig. But moving something this big isn't going to be easy. The captain is ready. Step one, prep the ship. The Mighty's 20-story derrick has to clear the deck. Everything you now see will soon be deep underwater. Step two, cut through the sea fasteners. 24 monster steel bands, each the length of two school buses, currently lash the Mighty's rig to her decks. They have to take them off the same way they got them on, with a thousand degrees of heat. The joints are solid steel. It takes a quarter of an hour to cut through just one. Step three, fill her up. The crew prepares to strategically fill the numerous below-deck ballast tanks overnight, basically reversing the process that got the rig onto its deck. The captain opens up the mighty's belly to the frigid waters of the North Sea, and the big sink has begun. Throughout the night, enough water to fill 22 Olympic-sized swimming pools slowly weighs down the vessel. But the captain can't sink the ship evenly. It would become too unstable. The mighty stern has to go down first, followed by her bow, until the keel descends 21 meters. It's a long night's work for the crew. By morning, the rig should float free. But once her sea fasteners are removed, she'll be at her most vulnerable. It's 3.30 a.m. Outside the port, the mega-deep Berger Stahl pushes through the last stretch of open sea before her grand entrance, when the port hits high tide. Rotterdam is bringing in her biggest ship. And the Stahl is ready. The helicopter will be ready above your ship at 0430, so it's ETA rendezvous 0430. The captain has brought his vessel safely to the mouth of the Euro Channel, the port's front door. But getting her through it goes beyond his expertise. It's time for Rotterdam's experts to take over. It's time for the pilots. The best way to land on a moving ship of the size of a small town in the dead of night is via chopper. Once on board, they've got an open deck, a flight of stairs, a seven-story elevator ride, and a costume change before they reach the captain's bridge. <laughs> The ship is now in Rotterdam's charge. Harbour control gives the all-go, and the grand opus of ship navigation begins. Getting a mountain of a ship to go where you want demands one massive propeller. 
At nine and a half meters diameter, five men lying end to end would barely make the distance. To replicate the incredible prop thrust from these blades, you would need more than four submarines. But the pilot's job now is to actually restrain the Stahl's power. It's almost time for her big test, getting through the port's front door. Will she run aground or just squeeze through these shallow waters? The Savannah's mega-wide load has been safely docked. But now, the port must face another challenge. How do you unload one of the world's largest container ships in less than 24 hours? Giant robots. Almost every machine you now see is controlled by computer. And these high-tech Titan's output is staggering. Lined up end-to-end, -end, the containers that pass through Rotterdam in one year could wrap around the world. This sea of industrial muscle is Delta Terminal. If the Savannah is going to make it to her next port on schedule, Delta's heavy metal minions have got to make quick work of her colossal cargo. Four 40-story loading cranes hover like vultures. Then, these bruisers attack Savannah's stacks. Overhead cable systems fast-track crane operators over their new turf. Even from 10 stories up, the human eye is the best judge to expertly place the stackers on all four corners. But then, the machines take over. Each loading crane can deadlift 40 tons. Below, the container's chariot awaits. Called an automated guided vehicle, or AGV, this car has a mind of its own. Literally. There's no driver because an onboard navigation system regulates its position direction, even speed, by a magnetic grid set into the tarmac. Once the container is loaded on the AGV's back, top-mounted infrared eyes ID the container and instantly roll the load to a preset stacking location, where another giant robot takes over. The stacking crane. Towering five stories in the air, this mega machine can grab, haul, and drop the equivalent of five school buses. Like the AGV, she takes orders from no man. Every move along her magnetic track is totally pre-programmed. Just like the other 37 cranes. 370 robotic cars that make up Delta's muscle fleet. Nearly 4 million containers pass through this terminal every year. That's 10,000 per day, 400 per hour. Tracking that kind of inventory requires some serious computer power. Delta's mainframe monitors the contents and location of every container in her matrix. By the time the Savannah pulled up to her dock, the computer had totally simulated her entire offloading plan. Container shipping has only been around for about 50 years, but today 75% of the world's goods move inside these steel boxes. When you take a bottle of milk out your refrigerator, it probably comes with a container. Or when you put a videotape in your, in your video player, it probably comes with a container. Almost all of Savannah's containers are in motion for their final destination. But a few are about to get a second look. A very powerful look. 
This container is in for a scan 25 times stronger than your average human X-ray. It's got to be thorough. Every kind of contraband has been stashed in a container's cargo. Cigarettes, cocaine, and weapons. Luckily, the Savannah's containers pass the security check. Meanwhile, Delta's army continues to chip away at her stacks. Even with this much mechanical brawn, a container ship this size takes the better part of a day to offload. Soon, her decks will be stacked with every kind of good imaginable, and she'll take to the seas once again. Meanwhile, outside the port's entrance, the biggest bulk carrier in the world still battles to squeeze her Megadep through the front door. The Burger Stahl is heading in, and the port is ready for her. The channel entrance has been dredged to the required 24 meters, a mere one meter deeper than the Stahl's gargantuan hull. Additional GPS units are placed to back up the ship's course. Almost 10 years of ship navigation are under these pilots' belts before they're worthy of bringing home a megaship this massive. Precise movements are paramount because ships this size are in a whole other category of steering. Cut the engine, and the Stahl would take 10 kilometers to come to a full stop. Misjudge your angle, it takes almost a half hour to turn her around. And in the channel's tight quarters, that's not an option. If she runs aground, it's like a cork in a bottle. Port traffic screeches to a halt. So the port calls in a little backup. Times four. Where the mega wide needed the tug's help with her turn, the mega deep really needs their help to slow down. But the fight doesn't seem fair. The Stahl is more than 800 times the weight of these tugs. They might be small, but they're feisty. The pilot choreographs his colossal ballet. The first tug moves in. No single man could ever hoist the Stahl's lines. Hand over hand, hundreds of pounds go over the side. Even with the help of the Stahl's winches, it takes the muscle of more than 10 men to connect all four tugs. One tug in front to keep the course, two on each side to keep her straight, and probably the most important, one tug at the back to slow this beast down. It all needs to move as one organism, so constant communication is critical. The tugs strain together and slowly begin to pull the Stahl towards the shallow waters of the port's entrance. Now, they just need a little help from the tide. This ship is so big, it can only enter and leave the port at the highest tide. So timing is critical. At the tide's peak, the Stahl's pilot has only a 10-minute window to make the move into the channel. Miss it, and he's got a 12-hour wait. It's time. 
Rotterdam just hit high tide. And the Stahl's slow, white-knuckle push begins. They have ten minutes to make the port's entrance. Transponders on the belly of the hull signal the increasing squeeze via echolocation. UKC, or underkeel clearance, begins to plummet. The channel's width narrows to the point of no return. It would be incredibly difficult to turn the boat around now. But the pilot's focus is not on the Stahl's massive sides. He needs to worry about the lack of water under her hull. It is calculated so that it will not come closer than one meter from the bottom. And now we have about three and a half meters. As they near the port entrance, the UKC drops from five meters to three to almost zero. Less than a meter of water lies between the Stahl and a colossal collision. The Stahl is moving precariously close to running aground. And high tide's peak is almost over. Nearby, the mighty Servant 3 is just about to start her own white-knuckle manoeuvre. Pulling off this hunk of steel without ship and rig going down. In Rotterdam's deepest waterhole, the mighty Servant 3's captain surveys the situation. For the last 24 hours, his ship has taken on close to 7,000 gallons of water and sank 22 meters under her new water weight. High above the mighty submerged decks, her big rig bobs like a top on the surface. Despite its 6,000 tons, the rig floats beautifully between the mighty's bow and stern due to the air trapped in her mammoth steel platform. The mighty is ready to offload, but pulling this mega tall baby off her decks is going to be a tricky move. The ship and its cargo are at their most vulnerable because nothing connects rig to ship except four thin winch wires. Two coming off the aft buoyancy casings and two from either side of her bow. Only essential personnel remain on the rig for the most dangerous part of the maneuver. To best pull the rig off, the tugs strategically tie their lines to the rig's right side and wait for the signal. The winch wires are released. The tugs get the go. And the big slide begins. The tugs' expertise is critical. If they crash the rig into the vessel's exposed bow and stern, the damage could destroy and even sink the ship. It's happened before. The rig is a quarter way off the mighty's deck. But its boxy design is pushing these tugs to the limit. Their engines respond with even more power. The weight of the rig puts a whopping 1,500 tons of responsibility on each tug's hefty steel cables. The rig is halfway off. The captain keeps a constant vigil on the balance of his submerged deck. If she starts to list too much, he'll shut the maneuver down. If the rig tips too far, it could also become a very dangerous situation for the ship and crew. 
but the mighty stability remains solid. The rig has only six meters left. And then, after one final tug heave, the rig is freed and floats away beautifully. The Mighty's mission is fulfilled. Over the next two weeks, Tugs will slowly haul the rig to her final destination, an offshore oil rig platform in the Baltic Sea. The Stahl continues her agonizing big belly glide. For close to 10 minutes, her mega deep hull has come incredibly close to scraping bottom and high tide's peak is almost over. If she ran aground, extricating her cargo to get her unstuck could mean floating cranes and two days work at the very least. The pilot eyes his keel clearance. It's hard to believe that this gargantuan boat can come this close to the bottom for so long. And finally, under her keel, she shows three meters and rising of water. The Stahl has made it through, and the port has brought in her biggest ship. Harbor Control gives the all clear for docking. The tugs gun their engines to bring the Stahl's massive girth to a halt alongside the dock. If she comes in too fast, she could take out the pier. The Stahl crew members stand ready to lower her great lines. At last, the Stahl's great mass comes to a final stop. Her mission is almost complete. She just needs to get 355,000 tons lighter. Meet the iron ore master, the T-Rex of cranes. She's 14 times the weight of your average construction crane. And 19 stories high. The Stahl is ready to offload. And this tower of metallic muscle is just the right size for the job. Once above the Stahl's hatch, her jaws plummet down to devour the awesome ore piles below. These mammoth teeth can get around an amazing 63 tons of ore in a single haul. Without this grate, the massive chunks of ore would break the conveyor belt below. In a single trip, the Stahl has contributed enough iron ore to make 300,000 cars. This Mega Mover's awesome arm gives her close to 60 meters of workspace, and she'll need it. Even with two other cranes just like her. Because the Stahl's deck hatches span close to four football fields across her decks. When the first hold is close to empty, down goes a full-size tractor to get every last bit of precious cargo. Working around the clock, it will still take these bruisers close to a week to get through the Stahl's entire load. The Stahl will soon command the seas once again. After all her ore is removed, she'll refuel, and then deep inside her hull, 
a crew of painters will resurface her ballasts to prevent rust. Then she'll head back for her next mission, to Brazil, and the only other port in the world that can handle the belly of this beast. Across the harbour, the Savannah's mission is almost complete. As soon as the last container is removed, her decks will be stacked seven high once again. And then it's back out to sea. Before the month is over, the goods she ships will find their way into the shops and homes of three continents. The Mighty's rig is slowly making her way to the coast of Denmark, where she'll soon give shelter to more than 300 people on an oil rig. The Mighty's ballast tanks are already unloading her water weight. Several hours from now, her decks will once again rise above the sea, ready for her next assignment in Finland, where there's a 15,000 ton oil drum waiting with the Mighty's name all over it. Three mega ships offloaded, three challenges met. The port scorecard is looking good. Harbour control could call it a day, but there's really no day's end for Rotterdam. Just the next shift. The next cargo load. The next megaship.